what's up guys? It's me, Britney Spears, free to play game designer. Last time we spoke, it was 2019 and I was designing a game called Zombie Inc. in the hot summer in some crazy conditions in a dilapidated house there. And it was fun. And um, since then, you know, I designed, I think I designed like six games that summer and we were about to go forward with one of them. A company said they wanted to build one. They were gonna give us three engineers for free. Before we went there, I said, Joseph, I wanna try to design a game that's as good or like Adventure Communist because it was a really good game and we used that game as a example of what is a, what we considered a top-notch game design. Hey, hey, wake up! It's time to grow glorious potatoes! So before I move forward with this one, I said, I'm gonna take two to three weeks and try to figure it out. I spent those weeks doing everything I could to try to design something that's comparable, meaning it's as small, within scope, something really easy to do, and has a yields a similar result as far as value. And this video is that, it's the journey of that. And then on the last video, uh, we will uh, go over the design. Something on my mind I wanted to say to the industry is that I think it's important for you to find a, a good reason for why you wanna do this stuff. A lot of people come up to me and talk about retention. They want to know about monetization. And I, I really don't know why they want to know. And, and, and I've asked a young man before, I was like, but why? You know, he had all these ideas and he's drinking a beer and he's talking about free to play, blah, blah, blah. He had all these things to say. And I was like, yeah, but why? Can I ask you a question? Why? Are you going to get rich or something? Like, do you own a company or do you have lots of shares in your company? And he was like, no. I was like, then why? Why are we all talking about getting this game to be so badass or talking about our cool tricks in these weird ways and everyone's kind of like all bravado, but really no one here will be rich, you know? And this young guy was like, you know what, good point. And I said, well, you, I said, the, the reason why I bring it up is because I think you need a, a stronger why. Because he was asking me for advice and I told him, I, personally, I don't think you're gonna make it, you're gonna ever make a good game. Uh, not because you're not good, but because you don't really know why you're doing it and the reasons that you think you're doing it aren't even true for you. And that's a long story, but you know, basically companies, they have at the recruiter level, they hire people and they say, this is the best time to get in. But usually like only 20% of shares, if that are allocated to the employees and there could be hundreds of employees, you'd be lucky to have 1%. And CEOs will say things that we're gonna make it, we're gonna get there guys, this is it. We're, we just don't mess up, this is gonna be amazing. But it's actually not true for a lot of every, everyone, right? Like, we're gonna make it is a really broad statement and it doesn't, it doesn't really mean that for you. You know, oftentimes the CEO doesn't even know your name. So it's very monetization heavy, of course, because founders have a fiduciary responsibility to the shareholders to increase the value of their shares by improving, you know, by increasing profit. So, it, and that's just, it's great, right? That's how business works. But the, the reg, the, everyone's beating the drum of monetization and getting rich. So you can only assume that most people are dabbling in free to play because they want to get rich. And the sad truth is that you probably won't be. Very few of you will be. And the, even those who will be rich on the flip side of this, sometimes financial motivation isn't even enough. I've met guys who have all of the, all of the stuff. I mean, they have millions of dollars, spend millions of dollars on games, and they have all the shares and stuff, and they still didn't really have what I would consider a really strong drive. And that's okay, you know, everyone's different. Maybe they were more graceful with it, you know? And I think some people who are rich in the industry know that like, hey, you know what, I am different. I used to be a little bit more aggressive. But basically what I'm getting at is you need a stronger reason. You need a, re a, strong, a reason that's true. So you gotta find one. If it's money and you wanna make money, then it needs to be true. I, I don't think that you're ever gonna, you're ever gonna, you know, succeed unless what your reason for doing this is true. Anyone who's financially motivated and they will literally become rich from working hard in this industry will probably accomplish their dream. If you are motivated by making something and it is true for you what you're going to be working on and everything is true and it's true for you then you will do it. You don't need a blog, an article, you don't need this YouTube video, you don't need anything. There is no secret because there's enough. There's enough. There's enough reason for you to do it. But a false reason will never get you there. It'd be like a football player that knows if he scores, he won't win. And it creates a lot of weak people, you know. I've had, for a lot of my career, been able to, I got the, I got the, you know, to come home from work and feel weak, hurt by the job, fluorescent lights, computer, 
you know, get my ass kicked, I come sliding through the door like a weakling. You know, I don't get to come crushing through the door feeling brave like I took on my industry or something like that. So when I decided that this was something for me, that it was a purpose for me and that there was no nothing that could really change that, it became way better. The industry got really small for me. I felt like, you know what, screw it. This is what I want to do and this is what I'm going to do. And I will do it for nothing, if, even if it means nothing. Like I will do it for zero shares, zero profit sharing. Sure, I have financial motivation. I would love that, but I can't count on it. It's not gonna happen. You know, I talked to the same guy and I was like, you know how hard I was working on that one project? And he was like, yeah. I was like, you know how many shares I had in that company? He was like, how many? I was like, none. You know how much profit sharing I had? And he was like, how much? I was like, none, I had nothing. And he was like, damn. And I was like, yeah, but that's normal, you know? Most people are working on a game right now that they just hope simply launches. You talk to people, you say, will your game be successful? They'll say, probably not. But I hope it launches, because I really could use something on my resume. It's like, wow, you know? So you need to find a reason, you know? And these reasons are far stronger than money, unless that's what you're motivated by, and then that has to be true. And it could be your next thing. You could say, all right, Paul, I understand. I'm at this company and I don't have any financial gains, but I am financially motivated. It's the next thing or something like that or, or, or whatever. But whatever it is, it has to be true. I just don't believe in you being able to do what you want on something false. So you have to, it has to be true. You know, I have these videos, you know, this video right here, which is kind of graphic and it, it doesn't have any, any blood or anything like that. But what we're about to see is a video of a soldier who was catapulted like 15 feet out of his, the top of a vehicle because he was a turret gunner because it was it, somebody came up with a suicide vehicle and exploded near them. He was thrown 15 feet. I think he has like two broken ribs, like a broken collarbone and internal bleeding. And he still has the will and the resilience to get up. Now let's watch. Fuck, man. Hey, get down. They're shooting. Hey, come on. Give me a gun. Give me a fucking gun. Give me my four. Give me my forty mic mics and a gun. Yeah, I can't fucking see what I'm doing, bro. Just give me any gun. Start handing me shit. Get out to it. You good, brother? No, I'm not. Just hang on, okay? They're coming for us. Oh. And an M4. Where the fuck is everybody? Ow! Oh. Give me an M4, man. Get away. Hey, give, fuck. give me a fucking M4. Lay down, buddy. Lay down, okay? Oh. oh, fuck my life. You alright? Ah. Ah. I'm not good. Just hang on, man. We're gonna get through this shit. Oh, give me an M4, bruh. So he still got up. Can you believe that? That's insane. It's absolutely insane. Now, is this guy gonna be more rich? No. Is, did his company tell him, hey man, if you really kick butt in war, you're gonna be super rich? No, I doubt it, right? In the game industry, it could kind of be like that. People are telling you, hey man, if you do good, you'll be, you'll be rewarded. It's not true, really. But even though this guy knows that, is it possible that this guy is working for a company that doesn't know his name? Yes. 
Is it possible that what he's doing is for reasons he can't even understand? Is, he, could he, is it possible that he understands he's even a pawn in a bigger scheme that he could never quite understand? Yeah, it's possible. But he has reasons. And he's, he has pride, right? He, the sense of adventure, brotherhood, right? Things like this are strong for him. And he's able to do some of the most insane performance. And at night, I imagine he sleeps fine. And that's so admirable, right? And I think a lot of us need that. And I invite you to find that, you know? I think that it, you'd have a much better time. In this other video, this guy comes home from, with, from, uh, from, from, I think his wife had a cancer treatment. And three burglars, home invaders, break into his front door. And bare-fisted, this guy beats the crap out of him and they all leave. Let's take a look. Bam, bam, get out of here! Insane! And when they interviewed him in the interview, they said, how did you do it? They interviewed him on some news. A really, really nice looking news channel. The, the link of the interview is in the description below. And they said, how did you do it? And he said, my why was bigger than theirs. My wife was upstairs. And if you look back and think about it like that, it's true, it's absolutely true. This guy had a bigger why then three of those guys, those guys were weak. Sure, they must have wanted the money, they wanted their house, they wanted, this, they wanted the things in his house and to rob him, but they didn't want it more than he wanted him to leave. And so there's a way to want something more and it to be real. And I think that is the true key to success in this industry and probably any other as well. And I, I, I just wanted to tell you that, so I hope that you find that and that you take a look at what you're doing and why you're doing it and wherever you are and whatever desk you're sitting at, whatever job you're sitting at, whatever company you're working at, whatever company you started, that you have a reason that's big enough and true for you. And so just find a strong why and have a bigger why and uh, you know, it'll be a lot easier. I found my bigger why and it makes my job way better. Anyways, so that's the pep talk. I came back from the boondocks and back to the Bay Area and I slid right into my mom's house. Mama! Mama! My mama. Mama! I told my mama we rich. Told my mama we rich. Ladies, have you ran up into a man-child before? Or a mama's boy? Somebody you thought, you saw him, you went, oh my God, look at this. Then you got to know him and you went, oh my God. Oh, here's another one. Go home to mom. Go home to mama. So I began to design immediately when I got back here. And uh, I started filming the whole thing. So let's, let's, let's jump into it.
I decided to make some flashcards, basically so I could have a go-to reference of every idle game that I seriously studied. Basically what I'm doing is there's a screenshot of a major part of the game and then I write things about the game that I remembered like it's very pretty, it had a suitcase system, it had a great use of ads, the train, and a newspaper feature, it had map completion, it had a flying alien, call outs of what I specifically remember about the game. So one of the reasons why I made those flashcards was because the next day I, I didn't have a really, I didn't have a designated place to really work. So I decided to spend a day in San Francisco, which I felt like I really needed since I had a crazy summer. And um, I went to San Francisco and I worked a little bit. And the this, this little part of the video is mostly just for visual entertainment, but it also does show how I use those index cards. And some people feel like you should take a break from work, like they call it um, active rest or something like that. Basically you go to the gym and then you leave and you, and you recover. Same thing with art. You have to separate yourself from work. So carrying a pocket full of flashcards isn't really in this recommendation of you know, retr retracting from work to recover. But for me, sometimes I need to stay in the orbit and I can still enjoy a day and I could still live my life, but I need to stay in the orbit of the idea. Or, you know, it's, it's really hard to remember 15 idle games or something like that. And if you had a pocket that had enough you know, full of flashcards that just fit there, nobody sees them, they're just yours. It's, it's not the first time I've done it, but it really does help you remember a lot about these games. And since I'm trying to come up with something that is similar and um, comparable, it doesn't hurt, you know. So this video, I went to San Francisco, and uh, there's really just, uh, it's really just a, a showcase of that.
After San Francisco, the next day, my job was to make some tasks. I, I usually make tasks for myself when it comes to trying to crystallize the vision of the game. And it's pretty simple how I do this. I usually start with where I am and where I want to go. I've always done this. And I actually got it from a guy, to be quite honest, to be, to be honest I got it from a guy named Joey Klein, who did, a, a, uh, he has a class called Mental Mastery. He's not the first person to do this. Even James Allen of Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill. No, James Allen did As a Man Thinketh. Napoleon Hill did Think and Grow Rich. Benjamin Hardy, the guy who wrote, mm, what did he write? Willpower is not enough. And he just released another book called Personality is Impormit, Import, per, Personality is Impermanent. A lot of authors talk about vision. Even guys like Mark Manson, who wrote the book Subtle Art Not Giving a Fuck, even though he doesn't agree a lot with Tony Robbins and Mastermind Group stuff, even he has a program on his website where he talks about getting an idea of where you want your life to be in the next five years, which is the very, you know, it's an exercise of a vision. But you can't get to your vision without knowing where you are. A lot of companies don't do this. It's true, you know, they get in a meeting room and they talk about what they want to make. And um, I don't know. No, everyone wants to figure it out within an hour, you know. What are we going to do? Let's figure it out in this hour. Then after the meeting, we'll have marketers go test a couple things. So what I'm doing here is I'm basically making tasks that I believe will help me understand where I'm going to go even better. So for example, I'll make a task that says play the crap at Adventure Communist. I'll make another task that says rebuild Adventure Communist entire UI. I'll make another task that says research all of Adventure Communist metrics. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll make a task that says read all, read every single Adventure Communist review. Another one that says uh, research as many themes as possible. Another thing that says uh, understand Adventure Communist pacing. You know, I would just write things down and I'll make myself do it. And I don't actually have to do every task. These tasks are basically like procrastination, <laughs> uh, active procrastination, if you will, because how am I supposed to know what I'm gonna do? What am I supposed to do? And it's like saying, make a hit song. And, um, you know, speaking of that, there's a book called, there's a book by Ableton, I forget what it's called. But it's like 74 solutions or something like that. That's really interesting read. In the beginning it says that if you don't know what to make, which is, you know, it's fine. A lot of people are kind of worried about making music because the music that they listen to throughout their lives directly influences what kind of music they're about to make. So where's the line, right? How do you make music if, you, if you're going to sound like somebody else? Well, it's impossible to make music that doesn't sound like somebody else if you've listened to music because you are an embodiment of, the, of your total hours of listening. So where's the line between like plagiarism, you know, and straight up copying people? And what they ask you to do is instead of using that song as a base, what you can do is write down things about the song. Write down, you know, they use breathy vocals. They have... Um, a, a male voice that's extremely loud or something. It's about 120 BPM, so 120 beats per minute. They have a really crunchy kick. And you say things like that, and then you look at this list, and then instead of listening to the song, you're actually looking at your favorite song in a different way. When I read that, I thought, you know what? I do that a lot in game design. Except, you know, in that same book, it says something about, like, the level of detail that you want to get from the song varies. So you can go as you can write as few things as of saying something like, "The song it has a four on the floor kick beat with really loud rock and roll vocals," or you can go to say like it has three hi hats on the eighth note and it uses a C major D a G chord and you can really get details about it. Now for me, I go extremely deep in my research, but my research isn't about copying. It's mostly about trying to figure out where I'm going to go with this and how I'm going to put my spin on it or if, if there's even a way out at all. Because sometimes when you make a game that's like another game, it's hard to detour from that game or else you're making something else and the company doesn't know what you're making. 
So for example, if you want to make a, a match three game, I mean, how far can you go away from that? It's probably going to look like a match three, but what's the difference, right? So what I do is I, is I write to myself, this is what I have. I have a couple engineers or something, and this is where I want to go. The game is going to be mostly UI based. It's going to have adventure communist feel to it, and it's going to have revenue like them. And um, that's where I want to go. And that's enough. Now, I know that's not enough for most companies uh, to like make decisions. And, and not everyone works like this because you know companies want to move, 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 move. But I'm a designer, okay? So, and I work with teams of designers. And this is how I would work with the team. So if it, in walked a marketer, in walked Joseph, and this is how, just how Joseph and I work, we start at the product level. We don't start at the numbers we want to make, right? We don't say we want to make $100 million a year. We don't start there. We start with what we can conceive first and then try to see what those numbers could reach based on that, right? So at the product level, I'm trying to decide what it is that I need to go for and what it is I have. Also, because game design, it's not like you can do whatever you want. You have to design with what's in reality. So think of it like this. We're about to cross a desert and I only have so much water. And the desert is so big. So I have to be really careful about how I make this journey. I can't just design any feature. I can't just do anything I want or else I won't make it. So if we only have, you know, why would I design outside of what's realistic for the journey? So game design is, is it's challenging like that and it's fun like that because it puts you in a, in, a, in a box, right? Like people don't want to read a book that's over 75,000 words and 200 pages or something like that commonly, right? Uh, and then people don't want to watch movies that are five hours long, right? So you have confinement, right? You, you have to make a game, you have to make your entertainment within a specific thing in order for someone to enjoy it. And also there's the budget too, right? Or else we won't make it. So that's essentially what I do with every, with every product that I have to think of. So if Joseph says, hey, we want to design a shooter game, or hey, I know this team, and they have a match three engine, what I'll do is I'll say, all right, here's some things I'm going to do to try to get to a place where I can elegantly speak my mind about this. Unless I have deep experience in that genre already, then I could possibly speak on it. So the rest of the video is actually built upon these tasks. I will then try to do these tasks. And the first task that I made myself was play the game. So let's play the game. So the next task I got started on was something uh, where I remade the entire UI of Adventure Communist. And um, this one was a way harder. This is not something I see anyone else do, uh, mostly because it's, it's, it's kind of crazy, but it's useful. So let's, uh, let's take, the, take a look at that.
that shit right now. I'm not sure how I'm gonna beat it just yet. I'm not sure if I'll come to a conclusion. It's a freaking weird game. And, uh, I feel like, I feel kind of depressed today. I think it's because I had a late, late night last night playing Fortnite and eating like McDonald's and playing Adventure Communists. I've been like on a weird mode. I can't seem to break it. But I've been working on it all day, just really slowly. I talk about this sometimes with my uh, friend and partner, Joseph. I'll tell him I worked all day and I probably did about three hours of anything. But I've heard writers talk about that too. Like David Foster Wallace says he would spend eight hours a day worrying about writing, actually only writing for like an hour or two or something like that. But I don't know why I do this stuff. Like, I don't know why it is I do this. Like, there's so many other ways to live your life. There's so many other ways. This is this is definitely one way to do it. People stream. They do vlogs. They have fun. No. I guess what's weird about games is like, you would hope that the journey is something super fun. You hope that it's fun. So that would make it worthwhile. Or else it would be really difficult if you were just trying to constantly make money all the time. So it's weird in that way. Because I guess it's fun. But sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's not fun. It would be fun to fucking know what the fuck to do right now. That would be fucking fun. Because Fun in the industry isn't just making stuff you love. It's also being successful. That's what the fucking a lot of people don't understand. Like, free to play is about trying to be successful too. You can't just mess around. It would be fun, but this game is bigger than what these guys anticipate. I asked them, I said, how many, um, how many engineers do you think we'll have? They're like, I had two, you know, some artists. It's possible, but my God, there's a lot of little details that make this game good. And now that I'm like redrawing it all and kind of looking at it and isolating those things that actually make it like work. I'm finding that it's, some of these things are pretty expensive. Like this game is a live service. It's not just a little game. It is a little game, but like if anybody on my team tried to make this game without this kind of stuff, it'd be a disaster. Like this is the kind of thinking, it's not just me. It's not like, oh, if somebody else did this, it would come out bad. But if somebody else didn't do this, there'd be so much iteration, so much discovery. There'd be so much waste because they'd be like, oh, I didn't know it should be like that. Oh yeah, I didn't notice that. We'll add one of those. It would just add up, add up, add up. They'd spend so much money. So if I could figure this out now, you could take what works and, and redo it and, and, and innovate in a much cheaper way. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'll shut the hell up. Ha 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 ha!
Well, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of the long days and stuff like that. But you gotta understand, this is like my whole career. It's not just this one night, because I know I'm so, so, you know, this project's barely begun and I'm already tripping out. But man, I am not a uh, enthusiast of the long days. I actually think the long days are mostly. Some people don't work as long a days as they claim they do, but. Sometimes it works like that, you know, and I definitely think you should take care of yourself, but that's so funny. I was like, should I leave that in there? Should I, should I get it, not put that in there? But I thought it was kind of funny. Shit happens, man. You will definitely hit a wall, man. And uh, it can be not fun. Because you are like a living being, you know. And even just one day can get you. You know, so I've been trying and I've been actually making these crazy journals over the last two or three months where I've been trying to dedicate my life to the to the free to play even hard even more. I've been trying to see like how to sleep and eat to get more out of my day and stuff. Some interesting stuff, some interesting videos to come. One day can really mess you up. Just one. Even a nine hour day. And I didn't eat. And um, that's what it looked like, you know. I was I was bummed out. So the next day I decided to go somewhere new. I went to a college campus, the San Jose University, and uh, I sat in front of this huge window and, um, you know, changed it around a little bit, which was a good change, good change of pace.
So it's a huge redraw of the entire game. Most, of, I think it's almost all of it. And um, why that is nice is because to some degree I can say like, hey, you know, I designed uh, Adventure Communist. <laughs> I at least redesigned it, right? It's like learning a cover of a song in some ways, but it's a lot of work. That was three days. I've re it's taken me that the most I did a redraw in about three weeks. And I still had something to do three weeks in. So some games are bigger and some games are smaller. But three weeks of that is pretty crazy. But um, you can only understand it if you do it, but it takes you from a really limited amount of knowledge to a lot of knowledge. You start to know everything about it. How many art assets you'll need, sound effects, uh, small particles, uh, the particle effects, the little nuances that would actually make the game feel good. And um, it's really, really useful. And you can look at things at monthly or weekly. Uh, you can look at the, you know, uh, downloads, revenue over that period, and then revenue per download, which is like the total amount of revenue that you're making uh, per user. Okay, can we look at Adventure Communist? Sure. 
just remember that um, this is pretty good, uh, 74 cents, 75 cents, especially since probably most of the revenue is advertising revenue. So that's probably like, they're probably like $1.50 to $2 per user. Uh, you know, 3 million downloads, 2.2 million. Uh, and then you can look at it by country as well. So then you can see what the split out in terms of uh, the money by country is. Yeah. Split by revenue, top countries. If we want to do localization, we just look here and see which countries we should localize to. Yeah. So that's really it, huh? You don't have any anything else that you really look at besides those two things? Uh, yeah, you could do ad, ad intelligence, look at like, you know, the types of ads that they're running. That's helpful. Hmm. Oh, weird. You can see, you know, ah, these are all the ads that they're running. And this on iron source. Time to grow glorious potatoes. Great work. Potatoes similar to quality and prosperity. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm interested in what Idle Theme Park is running. Oh, yeah, I get this one all the time. I get yeah. this. I get this one all the time. Um, and see their top creatives. That's probably more useful. See which ones are performing the best. But yeah, I mean that's basically it. It's pretty easy. Okay. I don't think any of the data is going to help me make a better design decision. Some of the um, some of the uh, ads are interesting because from a design yeah. from a design perspective, like. Sometimes people advertise what their game isn't, you know what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. like, maybe you should just design what the game isn't <laughs> that, they're, that they're still advertising. AFK Arena. Wow, what is that? That does not exist in the game. <laughs> that's not in the game. Yeah, that's not in the game either. That's cool though. What the fuck was that? AFK Arena, play now for free. What? Maybe it is in the game. Weird. That's all we have for this episode, guys. And stay tuned for the next episodes. I'll be looking at all kinds of stuff, trying to break down a good theme for the for the product. Looking at tons of free to play features. I struggle with a few things and I end up meeting with my hypnotist, Dan Ross. He's a hypnotist slash life coach. He's helped me out of a bunch of mental jams, helped me get back on my feet and feel even stronger. I include the whole session that I have with him and so much more in this series to, of trying to figure out a game that is as good or better than Adventure Communist. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, please subscribe, hit the bell notification so you get notifications when we upload the next one and other videos. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next episode.